Are you taking magnesium, melatonin, or any other sleep supplement, but you're still waking up feeling tired? Well, there's a tiny amino acid that might be the missing piece, and that is glycine. Glycine helps your body cool down at night, nudges your sleep clock into rhythm, and even supports your liver's cleanup crew. And in today's video, we'll uncover what glycine is, who will benefit the most from taking glycine, and some precautions to consider when taking it. So stay tuned. Hi, I'm Giselle Rosa, a board certified psychiatric nurse practitioner here to help you optimize your mental health through genetics and integrative and functional medicine using a skills before pills approach. So what is glycine? Glycine is the smallest amino acid. Think of it like a period at the end of a sentence. Your body makes some and you also get it from protein foods, especially collagen rich foods like bone broth and gelatin. Glycine works in your brain for signaling, in your liver for cleanup jobs, and as a building block for glutathione, which is your body's master antioxidant. So it's a small amino acid that can yield big results. And so how does glycine help you sleep? Well, falling asleep is like landing a plane. You need a smooth and steady descent. So about 30 to 60 minutes before bed, a dose of glycine can help your body shift into night mode. It tells your blood vessels in your hands and feet to open up, which lets heat move from your core to your skin. So your core temperature drops a little, which is exactly the signal your brain expects at bedtime. And it's important to note that people in studies who took glycine didn't always sleep longer, but they felt that they slept better and were less groggy the next day. And that's the win, a smoother descent, better quality, and clearer mornings. So who can benefit from glycine? Well, if melatonin makes you feel off or your sleep timing gets weird because you have some of those gene variants we talked about in the sleep genes video, like melatonin receptor genes and clock genes, glycine can actually help set the rhythm without adding more hormones. And you can pair glycine with bright morning light and a steady, consistent bedtime routine to optimize your sleep. Now, if you're running hot with inflammation due to elevated inflammation markers or you're genetically prone to inflammation and you feel sore, wired, or you're a light sleeper, glycine can help quiet down overactive inflammation and immune signals so your body feels less wired at night and you can drift into deeper, more restorative sleep. Glycine also helps if you have elevated oxidative stress or poor detox capabilities because your detox genes aren't the most efficient or you have been exposed to maybe various toxins and are experiencing toxic overload. Glycine actually supplies one of the three building blocks for glutathione, which is your main antioxidant. And some people will actually pair it with N-acetylcysteine or NAC, and that combo is called Glynac, which is used for extra detoxification support. But you must be careful when upregulating detoxification because this can increase the level of toxic burden. And if you are not ready to adequately excrete the excess toxins, then you can create more toxicity in your body, which can lead to various negative reactions. So a detoxification plan should always be done under the guidance of a knowledgeable provider to do it safely. Now let's talk about methylation and glycine. So if methylation is on your radar because you have maybe the MTHFR gene, MTR, MTRR gene, or any other methylation gene, glycine plugs into that system through the liver enzyme GNMT. GNMT spends your main methyl donor, SAM, or s methionine, to turn glycine into sarcosine, which generally helps keep the methyl budget steady. So when your recycling pathways are well supported with methylation cofactors, which we did discuss in the methylation video, so if this is going a little over your head, please check that video out. But glycine's effect on homocysteine is usually neutral, 
and can even dip it a little bit. But if those pathways, your methylation pathways are not supported well or are under supported, or your homocysteine is already high, which would be a sign that your methylation is under supported, glycine can actually nudge homocysteine upward because GNMT creates s adenosyl homocysteine. So bottom line and practical tip here is to bring homocysteine in a healthy range first. So optimize your cofactors and get to the basics like thyroid health, kidney health, lifestyle, then trial glycine low and slow, start at one to two grams, titrate to three grams pre-bedtime and recheck homocysteine in eight to 12 weeks. Now, if it climbs, pause, correct your cofactors and retry again. Now let's talk about gentle detox and what glycine actually does here. Glycine supports the normal packaging and shipping your body already does, and it helps it in three main ways. Glycine conjugation, bile acid conjugation, and glutathione support. So starting with glycine conjugation, this is phase two in detoxification. Think of this as a tag and bag step. Your liver tags certain small acids and chemicals with glycine so they become more water soluble and easy for your kidneys to pee out. For example, benzoate plus glycine it equals hippurate, which is a normal urine metabolite. And this pathway helps clear things out like some food preservatives, those benzoates, natural salicylates, and byproducts of fat metabolism. So if glycine is low, this step can actually become bottlenecked and supplementing with glycine can help restore a smoother clearance and detox process. Bile acid conjugation is another way that it helps. Your liver links many bile acids to glycine before sending them into the gut. And healthy bile flow helps move various byproducts, including some hormone breakdown products, out of your body. So if you don't have a gallbladder, this still happens because the gallbladder stores the bile and the liver makes and conjugates it. So because glycine isn't a bile stimulator, it's generally fine post cholecystectomy or post gallbladder removal. But if you're prone to bile acid diarrhea, start slow, take it with meals and consider adding soluble fiber. Now with glutathione support, glycine helps build glutathione which cleans up reactive byproducts from everyday metabolism. And that can help overall with detoxification. So let's move on with how you take it. Well, start simple. For sleep, begin with one to two grams about 30 to 60 minutes before bed. If you feel good, go to three grams because three grams is the most studied bedtime dose. Also keep your room cool and try a warm shower to help your body's cool down curve. For daytime cleanup or detox support, you can take glycine one to two grams with meals once or twice daily. And if you and your clinician wanna try Glynac, keep doses conservative at first because we don't want a toxic reaction. And when it comes to food versus supplement, protein and collagen foods contain glycine but they're not reliable for hitting that three gram sleep target dose. So that's where supplementing with glycine makes the most sense because you can get that precise dose. And when it comes to safety, glycine is usually well tolerated. The most common side effect at higher doses is mild stomach upset. Now, if you're pregnant or nursing, stick to food forms of glycine unless your provider gives you the clearance for supplementation. And if you take sedating or complex psychiatric medications, make sure to coordinate it with your prescriber so everything works well together. And when it comes to glycine versus collagen for sleep, collagen does have glycine, but the amount per scoop will vary and it comes bundled with other amino acids that aren't specifically sleep active. So if you're testing glycine for sleep benefits, use pure glycine at a known dose of three grams so you can clearly tell if it's helping you. And keep collagen for just general protein, skin, and joint support. So now my final thoughts on glycine. Well, glycine is a small, steady helper. It can make it easier to fall asleep by gently lowering your core body temperature and supporting your body's timing signals. It also supports your liver's daily housekeeping by helping package waste, 
supporting bile flow, and building glutathione. And most people will do well with three grams before bed. And if homocysteine is on your radar, balance your nutrients first, then introduce glycine slowly and recheck your labs. Remember, sleep is a system. It requires proper light, timing, temperature, movement, stress, and nutrition. These all matter. So glycine won't do the job alone, but it's a simple, affordable step that can move the needle for many people. So if you found this video useful, please hit the like button. And if you're not already subscribed to the channel for more mental health tips like these. And as always, I thank you for watching. I wish you well on your mental health care journey, and I look forward to seeing you in the next video.